Michigan court rejects surveillance as meaningless, while Kentucky goes all in when surveillance shows disability policy holder working. Surveillance in a long-term disability case can be a two-way street. The surveillance should have some relationship to your credibility and to the standard of disability. Many times, surveillance will show you engaged in normal, everyday activity. And as long as you've told the truth to your doctor about your activities and you've been truthful with the insurance company on your activity of daily living form, the surveillance is of little value. So for example, let me tell you the story about Mr. Carr in Carr versus Metro Life. In this Michigan case, the court determined that MetLife's decision to deny the benefits was arbitrary and capricious. MetLife had ignored and selectively reviewed evidence submitted by Carr's doctors. They relied on an infamous doctor, Dr. Avron Simon and Dr. Marcus Goldman, who without examining Carr concluded that he was incredible. And in doing so, they relied on the surveillance. And the surveillance didn't show him doing anything that was outside of his claimed limitations. The court said, no harm, no foul. But on the other hand, if the surveillance shows the policyholder lying about their activities, then all bets are off. So let me tell you the story of Mr. Quarles from Kentucky. Now, every disability carrier has the right to request proof of loss during the duration of the claim, as they did in this case. But Mr. Quarles lied. He lied about working while collecting long-term disability benefits. He was observed on surveillance working, and he specifically denied that during an in-person interview with Hartford's field investigator. He even dodged questions about his employment when there was an in-person interview. Now, Quarles argued to the court that the surveillance was a malicious attempt to discredit him. Really? Well, the court saw right through that argument, and the denial of his claim was a slam dunk. So the lessons I think that are to be learned from here is that a policyholder should be truthful, truthful all the time, truthful to their treating physician about their symptoms and functionality, truthful on the activity of daily living forms, and truthful to the carrier if they want to take your statement. And if you choose to hire an attorney to represent you, you need to be truthful with them because if you're not truthful, the court will see through this not only will your claim be denied, but, t but potentially the carrier can bring a claim of insurance fraud against you. And you don't want to be in that position. So lessons learned, tell the truth. I represent people across the United States and their disability claims, which is one of the reasons why I read cases across the United States. I want to see what courts are doing, what carriers are doing, and the pitfalls and traps that um, disability policyholders can get themselves into either unwittingly or in this case like Mr. Quarles on purpose. If you have any questions about your rights to disability benefits regardless of where you live in the United States, call me today at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation.